Dear students, today we are going to discuss maintenance and rehabilitation of pavements. First look at pavement preservation. Some common terms that we are going to discuss. These terms are preventive maintenance, corrective maintenance, pavement preservation, pavement rehabilitation. Preventive maintenance. The planned strategy of cost effective treatments to an existing roadway system and its appurtenances that preserve the system, retards future deterioration, and maintains or improves the functional condition of the system without increasing structural capacity. So this is the definition according to the ASHTO Standing Committee on Highways. So it's a planned strategy performed on good pavements, contributes to long-term performance, and uh, the examples are fog seal, use of chip seal, thin HMA overlay. Here you can see corrective maintenance. This is reactive. That means something has happened to the pavement and we are going to rectify that problem. Performed on failing pavements does not contribute to long-term performance and the examples are patching pothole repair. Here comes the pavement preservation. The sum of all activities undertaken to provide and maintain serviceable road is this includes corrective maintenance and preventive maintenance as well as minor rehabilitation projects so this definition is according to the national highway institute So we can say that the corrective maintenance plus preventive maintenance is equal to the pavement preservation. Pavement rehabilitation. Work undertaken to extend the service life of an existing pavement. This includes the restoration, placing and overlay, and or other work required to return an existing roadway to a condition of structural and functional adequacy. Again, this definition is according to the National Highway Institute. Now here you can see the pavement management concept and here you will have to consider the pavement life cycle, pavement condition, pavement condition index PCI, pavement serviceability index PSI, and the concept of critical PCI. If you just look at the pavement life cycle, uh, you can see here along vertical axis we are considering the pavement condition and along horizontal axis either time or the traffic. So what is happening to the pavement condition? In the beginning you are having the highest level of pavement condition but with the passage of time you can see that there is a decrease in the level of that uh, pavement condition. So with passage of time or either you can say with the increase of traffic the pavement condition is becoming weaker. Pavement condition can be rated using any number rating systems 
pavement condition index pci pci is equal to 100 for new and excellent road and pci is equal to 0 for a failed road failed road is that one which cannot be used anymore present service stability index psi is equal to 5 for a new road and psi is equal to 0 for a failed road and uh, this present service stability index is primarily used in the ashto design methodology when we discussed the ashto design methodology we discussed present serviceability index in detail then there is international roughness index IRI rating is inches per mile and is automatically recorded with the help of a special arrangement which is connected to the wheel of the vehicle here you can see the pavement condition index course of engineers developed for airfields ASTM now has standards for <clears throat> both highways and airfields <clears throat> analyze distresses so the type severity and the density these are to be considered and here you can see the different ratings excellent very good good fair poor very poor and failed so if you just look at this bar you can see the road is in excellent condition when it is from 85 to 100 road is in very good condition when you are having the pavement condition index from 70 to 85 and so on on this particular slide i would like to give you the concept of critical pci critical pci is uh, you can say uh, that value of pci that is the pavement condition index that is from 65 to 70 when you are having the pavement condition index falling from 60 in this range 65 to 70 then you can say you have got the critical pci critical pci means your road is having now serious issues but still it can be used but there will be a number of problems severe problems you can say so that's why you know it is called as the critical pci if you just look at this particular slide you can see here this is the critical PCI when your pavement is in this region then the preventive maintenance will be carried out and when your pavement is in this condition in this part then corrective maintenance rehabilitation or reconstruction these options will be exercised now look at this one preventive maintenance now in this case you can see that uh, with the passage of time or with the increase of traffic there is decrease in the pavement condition but when you are having the proper preventive maintenance so you can see that you could be able to maintain the highest level of the condition look at that but obviously with passage of time there will be some decrease but if you are having the preventive maintenance throughout the service life so you can maintain the original condition of the pavement the corrective repairs now here you can see this thing that uh, let's say your pavement is having this particular condition now if some corrective maintenance or the repair works have been done so we'll be able to enhance the condition and you can see the condition is now up to this level it has been enhanced and with the passage of time or increase in the traffic again you are having the same trend
Now here you can see the concept of the rehabilitation. Well, you have passed the critical pavement condition and uh, let's say the pavement is uh, having this particular pavement condition. Now, when you are having the rehabilitation, so you can see that you have brought the pavement to its original condition, almost the original condition. And then again with the passage of time, you are having this type of the trend. And uh, if you just look at this uh, reconstruction, there is a difference between this slide and the previous slide. In the previous slide, we were having the pavement condition somewhere here. But here, look at that. The pavement condition is very, very bad over here. And that's why, you know, reconstruction, option of the reconstruction has been exercised. And you can see that we have got the original condition of the pavement. And then with the passage of time or increase the traffic, you know, condition is deteriorating. We have already discussed the present serviceability index very briefly. Uh, you know, the values uh, are from zero to five. This is basically the formula to determine the PSI. So SV, mean of the slope areas and the two wheel paths, C and P measures of cracking and patching in the pavement surfaces. C is the total linear feet of class three and class four cracks per 1000 uh, square foot of pavement area. And P is expressed in terms of a square foot per 100 square foot of pavement surfacing. Uh, well, we are not going into the detail of this formula, but you must be knowing that this is the formula uh, which is used to determine the present serviceability index. Then comes the International Roughness Index, a widely accepted measure of pavement condition, IRI, International Roughness Index, procedures were developed by the World Bank in Brazil. Measures suspension movement over some longitudinal distance in inches per mile. IRI correlates with vertical passenger acceleration and tire load. To understand the concept of the International Roughness Index, IRI, you can see that some schematic arrangement is shown over here. So this type of the setup which has been attached to this wheel. So with the movement of this vehicle, automatically by using the computer system, we could be able to get the value of the International Roughness Index, IRI. IRI and pavement quality. So look at that, very good, good, fair, mediocre, poor, and you can see the values. If it is less than 60 inches per mile, very good. And uh, 61 to 94 inch per mile, good, so and so on. And here you are having the two ranges. One range is meant for interstates and uh, this range is for the other roads. Same you, uh, you can see format in the case of Medoka and the poor pavement case. This slide is also very informative. Present serviceability index and IRI. Excellent, good, fair, poor, very poor. So these are the present serviceability index values for these type of pavements. And correspondingly, we are having the IR values. So it's some sort of, you can say, the relationship, this slide is uh, representing the relationship between the present serviceability index and IRI. Okay. If you just look at the philosophy of pavement preservation, you can say applying the right treatment to the right pavement at the right time. So this is, you can say in a nutshell, uh, we can say that this is the philosophy of pavement preservation.
Okay, in this particular slide, you can see the improved pavement condition. Preventive maintenance helps to preserve a pavement and extend its performance. Overall condition of network improves. Fair, poor and failed pavements are reconstructed and returned to a high pavement condition. Excellent and good pavements are kept in high condition. Cost saving. Most persuasive, persuasive means uh, convincing. Most persuasive argument for shifting to preventive maintenance strategies. Forms of cost saving, less expensive treatments, longer payment life, reduction of user delay cost. So these are the benefits. Now on this particular slide, cost comparison, preventive maintenance, the minimum cost, rehabilitation intermediate, and reconstruction maximum. So out of these three options, preventive maintenance, rehabilitation, and the reconstruction, you can say this, the minimum money is involved in this case. So anticipated benefits, or you can say the expected benefits, higher customer satisfaction, improved strategies and techniques. So it means you would be able to get the exposure to the latest type of applications or techniques. Improved pavement condition, cost savings, increased safety and the stability. Okay, if you just look at this question, what is pavement management? So the answer is systematic method for routinely collecting, storing and retrieving decision making data needed to make maximum use of limited amount. It also creates a set of steps or computer routines for quickly assessing the data to arrive at educated decisions. Distress identification. What pavement characteristics indicate pavement conditions? Visible performance indicators, under that functional indicators in which uh, rideability is to be considered, structural indicators in which basically the body of the pavement is considered. Then come the non-visible effects, environmental effects on material and the load related damage. You will not be able to see these defect uh, promptly slowly, slowly, you will be able to get some environmental effects and the load related damage. So in that sense, we are using the term non-visible effects. Actually, these are also the visible, but uh, you could be able to see after a long period of time. What techniques are used to assess pavement condition? So in this regard, we are having the visual distress surveys roughness surveys, friction surveys, drainage evaluation, shoulder surveys, and deflection testing. For deflection testing, normally we use Benkelman beam to measure deflection of pavement slab. Well, on this particular slide, you can see the data collection platform and you can see uh, hey, this one video distress roughness and here the friction can be recorded and this one the laser system uh, which can be used to analyze the distress and to determine the roughness. So structural evaluation of pavements in this regard, we are having the destructive testing, 
In the case of flexible pavement, bitumen extraction test is performed. In the case of rigid pavement, flexure and crushing strength test is to be performed. Then there is the option of non-destructive testing in this regard. Well, this particular slide is uh, for the destructive testing. Destructive testing provides more detailed data about the pavement not possible to obtain through non-destructive testing. Such detailed data include laboratory, mechanical, physical, and chemical properties obtained through coring and trenching, and visual inspection of pavement layers through coring and trenching. Bitumen extraction test. This test is done to determine the bitumen content as per ASTM 2172. The apparatus needed to determine bitumen content are centrifuge extractor, miscellaneous items are needed, bowl, filter paper, balance, and commercial benzene. A sample of 500 gram is taken. If the mixture is not soft enough to separate with the trowel, place 1000 gram of it in a large pan and warm up to 100 degrees centigrade to separate the particles of the mixtures uniformly. Place a sample and weight A in the centrifuge extractor, cover the sample with benzene, put the filter paper on it with the cover plate tightly fitted on the bowl, Start the centrifuge extractor, revolving slowly and gradually increase the speed until the solvent ceases to flow from the outlet. Allow the centrifuge extractor to st stop. Add 200 ml benzene and repeat the procedure. Repeat the procedure at least thrice so that the exact extract is clear and not darker than the light straw color and record the volume of total extract in the graduated vessel. Remove the filter paper and the bowl and dry in the oven at 110 plus minus 5 degrees Celsius. After 24 hours, take the weight of the extracted sample, that is the weight B. The bitumen content formula is this one, A minus B that will be divided by B and then you can multiply that ratio by 100 to cut in percentage. Repeat the test thrice and average the results. So in this way, bitumen content can be determined. Non-destructive testing. Non-destructive testing is the collective term for evaluation conducted on an existing pavement structure that do not require subsequent maintenance work to return the pavement to its pre-testing state. This is generally desirable to minimize disruption to traffic and essential as, as a screening tool to determine locations where selected selective material sampling should be conducted to evaluate other material properties in the laboratory. As such, its focus is to assess in situ properties that can use to evaluate the need for further destructive testing that is coring, boring, trenching, location of that destructive testing, and the current structure capacity of the highway as related to layer stiffness. So NDT, non-destructive testing, model of pavement layer, low transfer efficiency. So these are the two outcomes. So in this regard, we are having the static creep deflection method, steady state deflection method, wave propagation method, and the impulse loading method. Static creep deflection method, we will discuss that method over here. And under that, we will discuss the Benkelman beam it is used to measure deflections of flexible pavements. The lightweight instrument is supplied in two parts for assembling on site with easy hand tools. 
and use one end of the beam rest at a point under investigation while the beam is pivoted at the center. The free end carries a dial gauge to record the deflections. The other end is kept on a stable platform with a dial gauge. This is a lightweight dismantable instrument and easy to carry. So you can see here the pictorial view of Benkelman beam device and this is the actual Benkelman beam which is being used on the pavement. Okay, uh, if you just look at the non-destructive testing, here you can see HWD. HWD stands for heavyweight deflectometer. I will repeat. HWD stands for heavyweight deflectometer. And this one is GPR. And GPR stands for ground penetration radar. I will repeat ground penetration radar. Why non-destructive pavement testing? Because measure, it measures structural condition in place, high production rate, because more information, better will be the decisions. Identify rehabilitation needs, and so knowledge-based selection of actions. Now in this particular slide, you can see the successful GPR applications for the pavement. Thickness of pavement layers, pavement rehabilitation studies, identifying changes in structure, defects in base, or you can say the wet areas of the base would be identified, defects in hot mix layers, stripping, trapped moisture, identifying areas of segregation and poor joint density, deterioration in asphalt covered bridge decks, base washouts. So up to three feet or you can say less than three feet, you can use this uh, technique effectively. Uh, there is one thing which is mentioned that limited success on concrete pavement. Uh, here the word limited success that means the results are not of that accuracy that you are having in the case of flexible pavement but still we are using this technique for the concrete pavement the findings distresses materials properties and you can say the material properties of the subgrade bases and the surface cores and the structural properties, deflection response, and the layer thickness. Okay, then you can see subgrade support. And uh, here you can see from soil sampling or lab testing in situ dutch cone penetration test field cbr test from deflection testing we could be able to get the information about the subgrade so in this regard we can use all these devices which i mentioned on this particular slide okay the material properties that you are getting in this regard. Bound layers, in the case of bound layers, you can get thickness, strength, durability, reactive aggregate or stripping issues you can analyze. Granular base, gradation and the quality of the aggregate, subgrade case, the index properties and the resilient modulus. Okay, now 
we have reached here the road recycling methods. First, just go through some important terms. Asphalt refers to the bituminous substance used to bind aggregate together to make asphalt concrete. The aggregate makes up the bulk of the asphalt concrete, while the asphalt binder comprises about 5 to 7 percent. Reclaimed asphalt pavement, RAP, is used asphalt concrete pavement that has been processed. Recycled asphalt concrete, RAC, is the product of mixing wrap with new aggregates, asphalt, and or recycling agent. So this wrap is reclaimed asphalt pavement. A uh, uh, recycling agent is used to soften and rejuvenate the existing asphalt pavement. This word probably a new word for you, rejuvenate. Uh, it meaning is, its meaning is to render young again. So I will repeat: a recycling agent is used to soften and rejuvenate the existing asphalt pavement. Asphalt top layer is made of Portland cement concrete PCC or asphalt concrete. The pavement is supported by the base and sub base, which consists of aggregate and other materials. The pavement can be crushed and used as recycled aggregate base, or if it is asphalt concrete, it can be reprocessed into RAC. Cold planing, also called cold milling, is the removing or milling of a layer of pavement by a cold planing machine. The exposed surface can be used temporarily as a driving surface and is usually overlaid with the new material. Road recycling methods. Purpose. Roads are rehabilitated to correct deficiencies such as rutting, cracking, brittleness, irregular shrinkage, and aggregate stripped of asphalt. The following are the methods of roadway rehabilitation that is recycled old paper into new. Well, on this particular slide, you can see the cold in place recycling. The pavement is removed by cold planing to a depth of 3 to 4 inches. The material is pulverized, sized, and mixed with an additive. New aggregate may be added to modify wrap. Wrap is reclaimed asphalt pavement. So I will repeat that new aggregate may be added to modify wrap characteristics. An asphalt emulsion or a recycling agent is added. Then the material is placed and compacted. An additional layer is optional, such as a chip seal or one to three inches of hot mix asphalt. A three-piece train, the train that you would find uh, that uh, on the next slide. A three-piece train may be used consisting of a cold planing machine, a screening or crushing or mixing unit, and a conventional lay down and rolling equipment. This train occupies only one. Well, this is the train that was I, I was discussing on the previous slide. So this train will occupy one lane, thus maximizing traffic flow. According to the Asphalt Recycling and Reclaiming Association, cost savings can range from 20 to 40 percent over conventional techniques because no heat is used energy saving can be from 40 to 50 percent. Then comes the option of the hot recycling. At a central plant, wrap is combined with hot 
new aggregate again you you can see the word wrap that is the reclaimed asphalt pavements so at a central plant wrap is combined with hot new aggregate and asphalt or a recycling agent to produce asphalt concrete using a batch or drum plant the wrap is usually obtained from a cold planing machine but could also be you could also be from a ripping or crushing operation hot in place recycling the pavement is softened by heating and is scarified or hot mail to a depth of 3 by 4 to 1 and a half inches and mixed new hot mix material and or a recycling agent is added in a single pass of the machine a new wearing course may also be added with an additional pass after compaction well on this particular slide you can see the hot mix remixing the road is heated to one and a half to two inches and the existing asphalt concrete is removed to that depth it is then mixed with new mix and or rejuvenating agents again the term rejuvenating is, has been used over here that means to render young again and laid as a single course then comes hot mix or you can say repave this method is same as remixing but it is overlaid with new hot mix on this particular slide you would find hot mix heater scarification and full death reclamation so hot mix heater scarification this method is appropriate for roadways that have a stable and structurally adequate base. The road is heated, scarifiers scrape and loosen the pavement. A rejuvenating agent is applied and the surface is leveled and in preparation for the addition of a final thin wearing course. Full depth reclamation all the asphalt pavement section and a portion of the underlying materials are processed to produce a stabilized base course the materials are crushed and additives are introduced the materials are then shaped and compacted and a surface or wearing course is applied now at the end we will focus on the failure criteria for pavement for flexible pavement, first look at the failure criteria. Failure condition in Britain. Maximum 25 mm deformation in the wheel tracks with respect to original level of pavement. Optimum condition for remedial works. 15 to 20 mm deformation. Here remedial works means provision of overlay or replacement of the surfacing. In practice, Measurements are made with the 2 meter straight edge. Failure condition is represented by a 20 millimeter gap under the straight edge. Optimum condition for remedial work 12 to 18 millimeter gap. According to ASHTO, failure condition for flexible pavement corresponds to PSI value between 2 and 2.5. For rigid pavement, for concrete pavements in Britain, a failure condition corresponding to a total length of cracking 250 meter per 100 meter of plane width has been adopted. So we will have to measure the length of the crack along the width of the road, width of the lane. So in this way, we can say that a failure condition a will be corresponding to a total length of cracking or 250 meter per 100 meter of lane width that would be the failure condition this includes all the falling types of cracking so look at the types of cracking here cracks 
fine cracks narrow cracks wide cracks here cracks what does this mean which often become apparent only when the concrete is drying and uh, which are normal feature of concrete fine cracks which are less than 0.5 millimeter wide at the surface of the concrete narrow cracks which are between 0.5 and 1.2 millimeter wide at the surface wide cracks of width exceeding 1.2 millimeter at the surface so in this way we have discussed the topic of maintenance and rehabilitation of pavements. Thank you.